Welcome to Luxury Dallas, your go-to guide for this city's finest. If you love things that bling, well then this is the show for you. Coming up on today's show. We sit down with Joe Pichetti, a world-class gemologist, to find out how he got started and why today he is one of the most sought-after jewelry designers and jewelers in the country. Then we head over to Skintastic to meet Lee Tucker Horn to find out how hormone replacement therapy can get us feeling youthful for the holidays. So don't go anywhere, because this promises to be another exciting show. I'm Joe Pacchetti. I'm originally from Tulsa, Oklahoma. I started my jewelry career with Zale Corporation when the Zale family still owned the business. I started with them in 77, made the largest sale they ever had in 79 left the company and went out on my own and uh, subsequently moved to Dallas in the early 80s and married a girl who was a fifth generation Texan and uh, decided to become a Texan myself and I've loved it here. I divide my time between Dallas and New York and have offices in both. I deal by appointment only. I've been a gemologist since 1977 and uh, like to travel the world and uh, acquire unusual pieces for my clients, things that they're not going to find elsewhere, one-of-a-kind pieces. Um, I try to tailor what I find to the individual that maybe this will go with Mrs. X's necklace she already has or Miss Y needs a ruby ring to go with that. I try not to call people and bug them or bother them if I don't have something that I think is perfect for them and I think people appreciate that. They also appreciate the fact that I'm knowledgeable about what I do and I'm able to afford them a great price, much less than if they had to go out and buy it on a retail market. So I enjoy what I do. It's a happy job. So many times I buy things from manufacturers I find in Italy or, or elsewhere when I'm abroad that I really truly love what they do and want to bring it back to Dallas. And then I have my own workshop here in Dallas in Farmers Branch actually that manufactures pieces for me, as well as one in New York. The man that I use in New York, they've been in the business for over 50 years and have won two International Diamond Awards, which is an equivalent of an Oscar in the movie industry. So I like to sometimes interject my ideas with that of a client. Um, you'll meet possibly Cheryl Wiley today and uh, see a project that she and I are working on together on a um, beautiful big black opal from Mexico that she purchased from me uh, this summer in Aspen. Probably one of the favorite pieces I've ever had in my career was a cross that was about 200 and some years old. And it was set with 11 diamonds that ranged from two to six carats apiece. And they came from a region called Golconda, which is an area of India now known as Hyderabad. And those mines have been closed for many, many years. And those diamonds possess an absence of nitrogen, which gives them an unbelievable limpid look. They're whiter than white. They almost look like a halogen light shining at you. Um, diamonds on the color chart with GIA start with D color. These diamonds would be A color if there was such a thing. And I found it from uh, an estate dealer who had bought it and he was going to disassemble it and make pairs of earrings out of it. And I said, oh you can't. You can't take that religious object and tear it apart. Obviously I am into religious and spiritual things. Probably the favorite piece I ever designed, or one of the favorite pieces I ever designed, was a beautiful, almost flawless emerald. And emeralds normally don't come flawless. They usually have what's called gardens in them, which are the little inclusions and natural, natural fissures and fractures that God puts in them when they're created, because emeralds are a soft stone. But I had a magnificent 14.44 carat Colombian Muzo Mine emerald and I made it for a client here in town and she said I want to be able to wear it any time. Well emerald's not really an anytime stone because it's fragile but she didn't want a lot of white diamonds around it so what I did is I took the ring and the, sol the whole ring was solid canary diamonds bright bright yellow golden yellow color so there was nothing white it was green and gold it became out to be one of the most beautiful pieces I created underneath it I carved her initials in gold underneath the ring from my workshop in New York. 
So maybe a year after I made it for her, I said, have you enjoyed your emerald ring? She said, oh, I love it. I, I think it's one of the prettiest things I have. And I said, have you ever you know, received compliments on the ring? Do people comment on it? Have you showed them your initials? And she said, oh, I've never worn the ring. And I said, why haven't you worn it? She said, oh, it doesn't matter. I just love having it and knowing it's mine. I take it out and look at it and I put it back. And I'm happy just knowing that I have something beautiful like that. No one else even needs to know. I thought that was an interesting perspective on something so magnificent that I created. Jenny, good to see you. Thanks for coming today. You too. Thank you so much for coming to the party the other night. Oh, that was a great party. Art for Advocacy, the children. Oh, that was incredible. Beautiful, interesting art. Fun group of people there. Yeah, it's a really young, hip crowd, and you were just so sweet. You, you're always such the great supporter of my oh. charity, so thank you. Well, I was thrilled to see you had on your beautiful pink sapphire bracelet to go oh with your God. pink it cool? outfit. It looked great. <laughs> it was like it. the perfect and bracelet. The ring. It was very rock and roll. Well, Mark said I should pick some things out and show you some things you might like to go with your other pieces for, Lucky me. for the holidays. <laughs> so these are beautiful. These are all rose cut diamonds in the center and they're set in 18 karat white gold. They're totally flexible oh my and they're micro pave. Cool. I'm going to let you try one of them on and okay. see what you think. Cool. Oh, and they're pierced. I love that. That would, I think, go nicely with the diamond necklace that you got. Let's see. To me, they're young and fun. They're very fluid. Oh my God, those are gorgeous. Aren't they? And they're really light. They are light. They look like they would times, be heavy. A lot of times they're too heavy. Are they know? comfortable? They're so comfortable. I can't believe how light. I thought they were going to be really heavy. You know, when you're older, you can't wear those heavy, <laughs> heavy earrings. Oh my God. Yeah. Let's see. Oh my God, those are gorgeous. <laughs> That's one of those. the things I thought I would show Mark because it would go nicely with your diamond necklace. They are amazing. Okay. I also feel like you wouldn't have to go totally black tie with this. Like you could, I think you're right. I you think could those could go fun. cattle baron's is ball even. No, I think it's hey, right. Hey, I'm in Texas. I can wear that, a diamond. Absolutely. Right Denim and diamonds. Love it. And then you had said something about you like the um, long diamond chain I had on the other night. Love and it. I think this is kind of fun. And we've done these and done very well with these. This is actually white topaz. And oh, really? they're set in white gold. Okay. And it looks like diamonds by the yard. It's actually white topaz by the yard. So you're looking at something here that's $2,250 versus something that would be thirty or 40000 if it was in diamonds. Oh, okay. That's amazing. And that... You know why that's so cool? Because so I, I love these, but some, you go, okay, well... It's serious. It's an investment. For a long, you know. Yeah, especially tiny. if it wraps around a couple times. I put a clasp in mine. Some of them don't have clasps, but I put a clasp in mine, and it just blends in right here. You can open that, and as small a neck as you have, it would probably go around five times. Okay. So you could have just a bunch of them there. That's twenty two hundred and fifty dollars retail. See, I know so many girls who would want this because this you can completely throw on just with jeans and wear any time, or, or you can dress just it up. a plain blouse. Oh my gosh. Yikes. Did I, am I doing am I on the, am I on the track? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. And I want to show you, I was talking to you about um, going and seeing Wallace Chan's pieces in Hong Kong and how he's the new jar of our time. And I brought back an incredible piece I want you to see just because it's really unusual. Oh But this boy. is a 13 karat emerald cut diamond and it's set in white jade. And then they're diamond-shaped diamonds embedded in the jade. There are no prongs holding them and no glue. It's a mystery as to how he does it, but isn't that a fascinating piece? So, well, yeah, especially considering my daughter's name is Jade. Perfect. <laughs> you're gonna well, that, need that. You're gonna need that. <laughs> that is crazy. How does he do that? No so one's really been able to. Knows. No one's been able to figure it out. I've only had two pieces of his ever. Um, oh my God! What's his name again? Wallace Chan, C H A N, and yeah. he's the new it. Um, wow. He had three thousand and some visitors visitors to his booth at the Basel Jewelry Fair. Really? Yeah, and he only makes so many one of a kind pieces per year, and he uses rare stones and. Was everything like this just very like grand and? He, I, I did a uh, picked up a snake from him that wrapped around that was all green diamonds. And the head of the snake was inlaid with black opals. It was amazing. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah, this is crazy. Well, oh, thank gosh. you for coming. I appreciate it. Should I just let you wear the necklace yeah, home? I'll just, and I'm going to go to carpool and <laughs> pick up uh, my kids. We up. are in Highland Park, so. <laughs> coming up after the break, we sit down with Lee Tucker Horn of Skintastic to learn all about hormone replacement therapy and how it can get you feeling young for the holidays. Where'd you have it done? Cheryl, you look fantastic. Skintastic, girl. Skintastic over in Dallas. It was a perfect weekend. Five-star hotel, limo, just Jack and I, and no one in this town has a clue. When it's time for a little nip-tuck, let the pros at Skintastic set it all up over in Dallas. No hassle, no worry, and no one needs to know. Fantastic. Skintastic. People want to replace their hormone levels because they want to feel better. They want to feel like they did 10 years ago or when they felt their best in life. And you can do that. You can optimize your hormones to feel like you did when you were at your very best. At Skintastic, we offer bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. I chose bioidenticals over synthetic options for several reasons. Bioidentical hormones are molecularly identical to the hormones that our own body naturally produce. They come from plant-based sources such as soy or yams and they offer several advantages when compared to their synthetic counterpart. Since bioidentical hormones are exact replicas of the hormones that your body already produces, your body is unable to distinguish the supplemental ones from the ones it makes itself. So much so that when you have a blood test run, your total estradiol levels reflects a combination of both your bioidentical and the naturally produced estradiol. Your body simply can't tell the difference. That is very important because it allows us to accurately monitor your levels and adjust your treatments accordingly. Since most synthetics are metabolized differently and aren't even visible on many standard lab tests, they don't allow us to tailor your treatment to your specific needs. Someone that might be a good candidate for hormone replacement would be a person who fits the symptoms of fatigue, uh, lack of energy, uh, headaches, mood swings, um, hot flashes, night sweats, depression symptoms, tearful, the list goes on and on. Uh, you'd be very surprised if you saw this long page of list that fits the symptoms of lack of hormones. We determine if you need hormone replacement by doing a full hormone panel and getting someone to fill out the symptom sheet, compare the two and see how much they need and whether or not they need them. When someone comes in to have their hormones checked, after I speak with them, we do a blood test of a full hormone panel. Then we have them fill out the symptom sheet. Then the next day when I get the results back, I compare the two, give them a call, and we decide what we're going to do. The procedure involves having them come in. We lay them on the table. We inject some uh, numbing solution in the upper outer portion of either glute. Then we insert the amount that they need. Everyone asks me when they need to come back in or when they'll feel the difference or what happens. They will know for sure. If we've got the right amount in their bodies within seven to ten days, depending on how fast your metabolism is, you'll know when it hits you because you feel good. You feel back to where you want to feel, where you used to feel more vibrant more energized, your moods are good, you get up barreling out of the bed every day, running 90 to nothing every day. It's really great. And you know you got it, you know you're going. People call me and they go, it's here, it's hit. Then you know you wanna come back when it starts to dip a little bit. We don't want you to tank, 
and it's gone, we want you to just come back when it's a little bit down so we can optimize it again. Now sometimes we have to work up that first time to get to the right amount. And I'm not perfect, but I can usually get to the right amount. Sometimes we have to work it up and get to that perfect place. But once we're there, if you're good and you come in like you should, then we can keep it there. The right candidates would be, again, according to the symptoms, we have as young as 26, we have as old as 82. So it really does depend on the age. Sometimes in this day and time, the stress levels are so high, people work out so hard, they're using more and more testosterone. It helps fat mass turn to lean body mass. When you lose that muscle mass and you feel like it's starting to sag, that testosterone really helps you get that back. And you have the big urge on top of that and the energy to go do more. You can work out more. You get going more. So all of that works for you rather than against you. And then you can go, wow, I need to control my eating portions and my habits. So you can change all of that, which in turn will help you lose weight. Unfortunately, this is a lifelong therapy. Once you've lost your testosterone or your estradiol through menopause or perimenopause, you're not going to get it back. It just is gone. But you can get it through your replacement and have it forever. The good news is we can replace your hormones bioidentically now and safely and optimize them so that you can stay young and youthful for the rest of your life. One of the best portions of it is because it's bioidentical, your body takes it when it needs it. If you have very stressful times in your life or you're working out for a triathlon, your body can take and use more of it. When you have a nice relaxing weekend on the beach, you might not need as much. So that's the best portion. You're not taking a certain milligrams of a tablet that you might need, you might not need. You've got this ready and waiting to take more or less of. Some of the symptoms a woman might feel would be foggy thinking, lack of focus. Your focus is off. It's like the windshield wipers are on and you can't quite get them to go fast enough to see clearly. Um, the lack of sexual desire, you have just no libido. It starts going downhill. Um, you don't have, you're not nice, you're moody. It, it's just, it's a bad feeling. You get headaches, insomnia, sleep disturbances. Um, people find that's a real problem. Yes, you get cheerful. Um, stress is a real issue. You want sweets, you want salt, more than your regular issues. The, the list goes on and on. Men, on the other hand, will really feel a difference in their muscle mass and their libido. That's huge for them. They have other symptoms as well. The sleep issues are really big for men. Um, but the most important thing for man is going to be that libido and that uh, muscle mass. Since there is no one-size-fits-all fix, when it comes to balancing hormones, the fact that bioidenticals can be adjusted as need be makes them far more effective and much safer than synthetic hormone replacement drugs. I have made such good friends because people come back happy. They feel good. Their life has changed, literally, because they feel like they used to feel. They had no idea they could feel good again. Don't go anywhere because coming up after the break, we're going to show you one of the world's largest and most beautiful opals. Luxury Dallas will be right back. So, where'd you have it done? Cheryl, sure. you look fantastic. Skintastic, girl. Skintastic over in Dallas. It was a perfect weekend. Five star hotel limo just jack and i and no one in this town has a clue when it's time for a little nip tuck let the pros at skintastic set it all up over in dallas no hassle no worry and no one needs to know fantastic skintastic i've always thought with a philanthropic mind um, i was fortunate that i was adopted from an orphanage and I was given a beautiful life, not one with material wealth at all, but one with the wealth of things that really matter. 
and that's giving back. And what I've tried to do in my life is give back, whether it be of my time or my connections or my knowledge or whatever finances I can. I try to give back and I have many charities that go from animal causes to ages issues to human rights issues abuse issues, things that touch my heart. Maybe I've had a friend that's experienced one of those issues and I want to be able to help them. Diffa Dallas has probably been one of my favorite charities I've been, been involved with for over 20 years. I was there at the start when Diffa first started and you could buy a jacket for $100 or $150. That doesn't happen anymore. They have magnificent jackets designed by all kinds of famous people and they come with packages going to the island of Mystique or wherever, and the jackets go for $20,000 sometimes. And I'm thrilled to see that they've gone across the million dollar mark. The year I was honorary chair, I helped take them past that mark. My daughter was the first legacy at DIFA that they ever had, and she was one of their style council ambassadors. And at that time, she was at the University of Texas, and she solicited her sorority sisters and everyone to donate and, and about AIDS awareness. And I was thrilled because the younger generation needs to know what my generation has lived through. Um, that's probably one of my favorite. Um, there's a hospice in Oak Cliff that I've become very fond of and it's called the Legacy Founders Cottage. And uh, it takes care of men, women, and children who have no other place to die, no other place to spend their last days. Maybe their family has rejected them, maybe they don't have the money to go somewhere and we take care of them at the cottage and give them a place with dignity and respect and hot meals and a nurse to take care of them. And I was fortunate enough to be seated next to Leslie Jordan a few years ago at a charity function in Los Angeles that I had donated to. And Leslie said, Joe, I know all about you. Michael Hollingsworth has told me about you. What can I do to help you in Dallas? And I said, you can do something immediately to help me. I want to have an event where you come and you perform and the money goes. And so he comes every year between Christmas and the first week in January. It'll be January 4th this coming year. It'll be downtown. It's called the Eagle's Nest. It used to be called the Weissville Center. It's a beautiful church downtown on Cadiz. And Leslie does like a revival. And he gets up and does his one-man show. This year we're going to have a gospel choir. And we have tickets that range from $100 up to $500 each. And you can have dinner with Leslie beforehand if you buy one of the VIP tickets. And the money all goes that night to the Legacy Founders Cottage. I take care of Leslie's expenses and getting him here, an hotel, and he's been very generous to donate his time at a much reduced rate because he believes in the cause as well. Probably one of the most fun pieces I ever made was one for Jason Seahorn when he proposed to my goddaughter, Angie Harmon. Gosh, it's been over 10 years ago now, but Jason called me and told me he'd like to buy a diamond for Angie, and he and I went diamond shopping, and he gave me two days to have the ring made, so we whipped it together, and I don't know if you recall or not, but he proposed her on the Jay Leno show, so I had to get the ring made for them to fly to California, and then he proposed to her, and it's a magnificent ring. It really is. It's beautiful, and she gets lots of compliments on it, and I've had a lot of people tell me how beautiful they think the ring is. They all want to know how big it is, and that I don't tell, but it's an impressive ring. It's a Texas-sized ring. Thanks for coming, Cheryl, today. It was great to see you at the Human Rights Campaign Dinner the other night. That was fun. It was fun, and I think they made a lot of money. I heard we had 3,100 people. So This is the exquisite, exquisite Mexican opal that you bought, and I just think it's the most beautiful I've ever seen. The colors are tremendous. And then you flip it over and you have a whole different colorway and color pattern. And I've asked Catherine Jetter, the designer, to draw up a couple drawings for you that I thought might be interesting. And maybe the two of you could even come together with some ideas of how you'd like to mount it. Yeah, good. Because these are this is one of those things that I get and I love so much that I just stare at it until I come up with a perfect solution. So Well, yeah. you did perfect on the Ruby. Let me show you a couple drawings that that Catherine did, especially for that piece and for you. Here she's drawn it as a ring. Oh, I and you think about that. And you see these are all like seaweed coming in there around it in all the different colors. And she would use savorites and she'd use uh, 
multicolor sapphires. It's a and healthy size for a ring. It's a Texas size. <laughs> <laughs> so she did one as a ring, and then she did one as a pendant, which I prefer. And as she and I talked about it, I think it would be more wearable for you this way. And these can be little branches that come up around here, or they could be snakes, or I know you like bamboo. They could be bamboo coming up. And it could be one colorway here, then you have that on a swivel and it turn around and the stones on the other side could be complementary of the reds. Yeah, I love that. And then you could put it on a strand or two of black diamonds as you wished, or if you wanted to put them on savorite beads, you could do that. But I think it's probably more wearable as a pendant and really more functional that and way. And you get both sides. And you get both sides yeah. as well. And safer because an opal is a soft stone. But this stone is 36 years old and it's in magnificent shape. It's been out of the ground. No grazing. For no grazing at all. So it's just amazing, amazing stone. And it's even cooler in sunlight. It, it's alive when you take it outside. What kind of charitable events are you going to do this fall or spring? Anything new or interesting I should hear about? We just did the black, big black tie one, but um, no, our animal one that we always both go to, uh, Paws Cause. Oh, that's you know, right. It's January. Okay, I know it's after Christmas. So I was actually going to talk to you about if you wanted to do a piece together with me and as a donation. Oh, I'd love that. Yep, okay. That would be fun. Okay. Do you remember the date by chance? No, I don't. January. Okay. I'll go look it up. I I'll make sure I... just got email on it today. Okay, perfect. I'd love to do something with you on that. Such a great cause to... Animals? Really? We both have them. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be great. Really, thank you for coming today. I know you're busy, and I appreciate your time. And and um, I'm I'm thrilled with what you've done with with the uh, changing of the star ruby. And, and I love the fact that you're able to wear the earrings as pendants too. Love seeing this. I haven't seen that in years. And thank you for wearing some of my favorite things you've gotten from me over the years. Really, thank you for getting them for me. <laughs> well, that's my job. <laughs> Can't pay the rent if I don't. <laughs> and no, basically I don't like coming to hang out with you, so it's really a chore to come and visit. I know, you come to visit Betty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Luxury Dallas, and we hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to go like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter so that you can stay updated on all that is this city's finest. We'll see you next week for another episode of Luxury Dallas. Luxury Dallas has been brought to you by Skintastic, your beauty realized. For information on booking a segment, contact Lamont PR. This has been a production of Media Matters, when your message needs to matter.